Let us go to the phones, starting with an anonymous caller from North Carolina. Welcome to the line of fire. Thank you, um, Dr. Brown. Um, I'm calling to ask the question. Um, I am a believer. I am saved. And I am a true believer of everything that God has said. I have a question that I don't understand. I asked a question, my pastor asked a question that if you died today, would you be scared of dying? And I was the only one in the room who said yes. Yeah. And he said, well, Sheila, you believe in God, you repented of your sins. So you shouldn't be scared of dying. Mm -hmm. And he said, so do you know that you'll go to heaven? And I said, I'm not 100%. And then he said, well, if you believe and you repented from your sin, then you would go to heaven. Well, I don't believe that that's enough. I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I get that. But... In the Bible, it talks about who won't make it in, the murderers, the, you know, the homosexual, and all the other things, the liars, the thieves, and all that. But I don't think that I have gotten to the point where I believe my grace, God's grace was enough for me. I think there's something else that I have to do in order to go to heaven. I think it's more required to... Yeah, so so God. Let, let me ask let me ask you this. Do you think seeing how holy God is and how perfect God is that you'll ever be good enough on your best day to get into heaven by your own works? No, sir. Okay. No, so no, sir. all right, so I good. Do. We agree on that. Perfect. Let's now let's go to the other side. Do you think the blood of Jesus is enough? to pay for all your sins? Yes, sir. Okay. So look at it like this, all right? Let's say that uh, you you had a favorite restaurant in town, and you'd go there every week with your family, and you were there so much that you had an account, and you just would pay like once a month when you came in there, right? You take all your family and friends there, you know, big meals, spend a few hundred dollars each time. So it turns out, that uh, when you go to pay for the month, you owe $1,000, you don't have it, right? Uh, and then right, right before they're, you're about to think, well, then I can't go back until I pay, they call you, oh, by the way, someone paid your whole account. Everything's great. So someone paid it for you. You can go right back in there, right? You don't owe a penny. You don't owe a dime. So that's how Jesus paid for your sins. He, he paid for all of them. You don't owe a dime. You go to heaven because Jesus made you worthy. It's like he, he looks at the Father and says, okay, I paid for this one's admission. Let them in free, right? Now you say, but what about the verses that say the murderers will not inherit the kingdom of God or adulterers? Those are people who refuse God's grace and refuse his mercy and refuse to repent and instead insist on sinning without repenting. Now, is, is that the way you're living? In other words, or are you saying, God, I know this is not your will, but I don't care. This is how I'm going to live the rest of my life in willful sin and disobedience. Is, is that the way you're living? Is it just that you struggle and have ups and downs like everybody else? I, the way you explain it, I, I understand. But I, it's just like worry. I know worry is a sin. Right, but are you saying, God, so, I'm going to worry no matter what, or God, I'm, I'm having a hard time struggling with worry? You follow what I'm saying? God understands yeah. our weakness. It says in Psalm 103, he remembers our frame. He knows that we're just dust, right? And, and it says, if we say right. we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right, and, and it says in Romans 8, if God is for us, who can be against us? If Jesus paid for all your sins, then who can possibly bring an accusation against you? They're gone. They're paid for. It's like that whole account got deleted, and when people go to search for it, it's not there. It doesn't exist. The bill has been paid, 
and, and tossed into the, the garbage, the, the sea of forgetfulness. Micah 7, he remembers your sins no more. Jeremiah 31, same thing, remembers your sins no more. He casts them into the sea. So what you need to do is, is recognize, okay, I'm always going to be imperfect. On your best, maybe you didn't worry one day, but maybe you weren't loving enough to your neighbor. Or maybe you, you didn't really pray with focus. Or maybe when you're reading the Bible, you let your mind wander to other things. That's human nature. Or maybe you thought a, an ugly thought towards another person. Lord, wash me, cleanse me. That's the daily cleansing. That's just getting cleansed day by day so that we're in good fellowship with God. But your sins have been forgiven because of what Jesus did. And when God looks at you, he doesn't see someone, oh, she's worrying too much. Oh, she's got some fear. No, he sees you as his child. How would you, if, if you told your own, let, let's say you got a three-year-old daughter years ago, right? And you're, you're going to go on, a, on a, a, a car ride and she's afraid of the car. And you'd say, hey, trust mommy. Everything's going to be all right. Do you look at her like, why are you sinning by worrying? What's the matter with you? Or do you look at her like, oh, you sweet little thing. It's going to be all right. So when your heart is set to please the Lord, in other words, you're, not, you're not in willful sin, rebellion. He's looking at you, hey, my daughter, trust me. Everything's all right. I, I got a place for you. I got your name written in the book of life. Everything's good. Rest in that. Trust his goodness. We get into heaven. We get to be with the Lord through what Jesus did. And the only way we don't make it is if we willfully reject it. Either we don't believe or we willfully turn away and refuse to follow. So are you able to receive that? I know you've heard this before, but is it is it getting in a little bit better? Yes, sir. I, I, I understand um, the way you explain it. it. It's real clear because my major worry is that the sins of what my children are doing that they're all grown and out on their own, that I caused it by my sins. But how am I supposed to cover my children's sins that they didn't even ask to come here? Yeah, so so first thing, yeah, listen, as a parent, we do have responsibility in, in the lives of our children to an extent, but then they make their own choices. And none of us are perfect parents. Let me ask you a question. Did God create Adam and Eve perfectly? No, sir, because they sinned. No, but when he made them, did he make them perfectly? Was there anything wrong with yes, what he yes, did? Yes, sir. Nothing wrong with what he did, right? No, sir. Yet they no, sinned. Sir. No. They sinned. Was that, yes. was that his fault? No, sir, it was not. Got it. He and then, told them what not to do. Right. Then Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1, God says, I raised and reared children, but they rebelled against me. That wasn't God's fault. So if whatever you did, failings as a mother. I certainly had failings as a father. Those are all what we confess to the Lord, and we're forgiven. And now you, what you do as a mom is you pray for your kids. You pray that God would really get hold of them and save them and bring them to himself. The prayers of a mother are very powerful, but the sins of the children are the responsibility of the children. And Jesus died for those children too. So be at peace, rest in the Lord, receive his free gifts so you know, hey, if I close my eyes, I go to be with Jesus. It's settled because what he did, with that mindset, you'll, you'll, you'll find much more security and much more ability to pray for your kids. So, Father, I pray for my sister. May she rest in that deep assurance that she's forgiven and loved and accepted, and that if she were to die, she'd be in your presence immediately. May she rest in that, and with that, have even greater power to pray for her kids. For others struggling like her, give them assurance. If they're your children, give them assurance in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for calling and walk in that grace. It's good when you do. It'll give you great peace. Ah, oh, sense of security. All right, back with more calls. Then I want to talk to you about India. I'll be right back.